Sydney. This passenger has come to the attention of officers as they have noticed him lurking behind the primary line. The man is acting very strangely and appears to be trying to avoid showing himself for identification. Our officers noticed he was acting a little bit nervous when he arrived into the entry control point. He didn't proceed straight up to a customs officer with his passport. He sort of hung around the back of the hall. He appeared to be stalling. After finally presenting himself to officers, it is established that he is a Malaysian citizen and has flown in from Dubai on a tourist visa. He claims to be here on a short five-day holiday. However, officers suspect that he's not telling them the truth and decide to take him aside for further questioning. We questioned him a little bit further about what his plans were, what he wanted to see, what he wanted to do. He could not really tell us much about Sydney apart from he just wanted to walk around and have a look. So again, that's um, raised the officer's concerns about him being a genuine traveller to Australia. During the interview, officers perform a baggage inspection and this causes further concern about his reason for travel. Basically, he's come with no clothing. He's got four and a half kilos of chocolate and alcohol. It is quite unusual for a holiday maker to bring such a large amount of chocolates, considering he doesn't know anybody in Australia. He's got no contacts here, so he's not bringing any gifts for any friends or family that he knows here. What's more worrying is the foul odour wafting from the man's direction. From the moment we spoke to him, we could smell that something wasn't right. It looks like he was a little bit frightened. We've noted that there is a particular smell which is consistent with faecal matter. Border Force officers are interviewing this French traveller who has just landed. They are concerned she may have plans to work which would be a breach of the conditions of her tourist visa. Okay, how long are you planning to stay in Australia? I don't know when you day. So you're not aware of how long you wish to stay in Australia? Depends on my budget. So tell me a little bit about what you're here for. Do you have any intended activities whilst you're in Australia? I really want to improve my English, so I just spend time with uh, English people or travellers and speak. Speak English again and again. Have you been in any contact with anybody in Australia? When? Prior to coming to Australia, have you been in touch with anybody? No. Okay, so nobody knows that you are coming to Australia? No. Do you know anybody in Australia? No. The woman is acting coy about having contacts in Australia. So officers check her phone for information and suspicions are immediately raised by what they find. What my main concern is, is that she's denying that she's got anybody that's here to meet her, nor is she planning to see anybody while she's in the country. Right. Now, that contrasts with some of the text messages that were found on her mobile phone, which I'm still yet to put to her. Mm. But to me, it, it appears that she's been quite hesitant to disclose what her true intentions are for what, what she's here to do while she's in the country. She's pulling, she's pulling the bag in now. Sydney, biosecurity officers suspect that this couple travelling with their two young children have items in one of their bags that should have been declared. Yep. There's nothing to declare on their card, however they have um, a whole bag of organic material, so we'll have a look in there. Officer Bryant the now gives them a final opportunity to declare any food. Yeah. Did you both understand the questions? Oh, yeah. The couple insist that they have completed their card correctly and make no declaration. All right, I'm going to have a look in the bag. It doesn't take long to find the undeclared food, but what's living inside the fruit now raises the concern for biosecurity officers. OK, what we've got is we've got some peaches, nectarines. This one here, there's a hole in the side and something's been eating it. This is a serious issue because there could be a caterpillar or an insect in there eating it, and we just don't know from looking at it. Obviously, the couple are unaware that infested fruit carries pests and diseases which are a dangerous threat to Australia's agricultural industry. Sorry, I didn't know. 
you have anything else? No. Did anybody else put it, put anything in this bag? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. But Officer Brian now finds something which will prove that they did know all along. Okay, what's this? Uh -huh. Sorry, I don't know. This family, they had another card that was in their language. They could read it, they could understand it, and yet they filled out the declaration in English. So it just doesn't add up. This tells me that you knew what that said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't just change your mind. Border Force officers are concerned by an unusual odour which has been detected coming from this passenger. We've noted that there is a particular smell which is consistent with faecal matter. The source of the foul stench is yet to be identified and officers have the unpleasant task of determining what the man is hiding and where. They start by taking a closer look at the items in his possession. Stink! Quite strong smell. And the nasty situation becomes increasingly serious for the passenger, as mixed in with his chocolate box are a number of large yellow pellets. Experienced officers recognise these pellets as similar to those used by drug couriers to carry narcotics internally. It looks like the pellets that people usually swallow. Even though they're relatively large, people have been known to swallow 90, up to 90 sometimes. So now that we've got, we know what's in this, we'll close this one up, put it aside, we'll get the other ones out one by one. Further inspection reveals that all four of the chocolate tins contain the same yellow pellets. And it doesn't end there, as officers now open a package that the passenger claims is duty-free alcohol. There is a box of Johnny Walker full of pellets. It's possible that he had them all inside of him solely because of the smell. So that's why we thought that he soiled himself. It was what was in the boxes that we were smelling. Officers confront the man with the discovery. The passenger still made no omissions as to what could be contained inside the pellet, and he's not offering us a lot of information at this stage. With the passenger claiming to have no knowledge of the items found, officers will now carry out testing on the contents of the pallets. And if they find illicit substances, this man's life will take a serious turn for the worse. In Sydney, this family arriving from China have been found travelling with a bag of infested peaches. You've said no fruit. It says it right there, no, no fruit. And you've got fruit. Now Officer Brian enlists another passenger to translate and help explain the seriousness of the couple's failure to declare. And I want to know why, considering they had the card in their language, did they then give me the wrong answer in English? Because um, she said the kids forgot to take out the peach. A surprising backflip in their explanation, and the couple now blame their children for the hidden peaches. All of a sudden, it's, oh, no, it was the kids. The kids didn't um, get rid of it for us. The kids are minors. Once they're over the age of 18, then they can be held responsible. Until then, it's the parents' responsibility. Sorry, I don't know. The couple refused to take responsibility for the false declaration, but their passports reveal they've been to Australia many times before. That just tells me you have no excuse. You should know better. I'm getting the feeling from them, they've been through here before, they're looking for a quick way through, and so they've simply ticked no to everything, and now that they've been caught out, now they're blaming it on the kids. She said, it's, it's OK to hurry up, because she's in a hurry to catch the flight. Yeah, but it'll take time, because I've got to print the document. We have to go make the payment. It doesn't happen instantly. 
explain it to them. The couple are now upset, but fail to realise that they've caused their own delay by failing to declare. If they want to get through here quickly, they need to abide by the law. And despite the kids being very young, the mother insists on blaming them. Border Force officers have found evidence that this woman may be intending to break the conditions of her tourist visa by working in Australia. Listen, I'm going to be on. I'm going to be upfront with you. I've got some concerns about your travel to Australia. So, can I ask you? Do you be looking at any jobs here in Australia? No, because I know I can't with my tourist visa. This is a, uh, an email. Emails that were found on your mobile phone. And the information on it clearly depicts that you may be here for other reasons other than tourism purposes. Yeah. Have you made contact with anybody about intended activities whilst you're in Australia? Yeah, maybe uh, doing some woofing. The unusual term woofing refers to willing workers on organic farms, which is a specific type of volunteer work that is allowed on a tourist visa. So, who is this person that you've been emailing? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. To be a valid woofer, travellers must agree to do four to six hours of gardening or farming work in exchange for a day's food and accommodation. What's your understanding of woofing? To spend time with family uh, and get free accommodation and free food. But for that, you need to work for them. Okay, and what type of work would you be doing for them? Maybe uh, take care of kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what my concern is, is that the activities that are listed on, on these emails yeah. are not necessarily activities which would constitute woofing in Australia. Go bike riding, walk the dog, or walk on beach, skateboarding, play games. These types of activities are indicative of what someone who is doing nanny or au pair work would be doing. Yeah. Are you aware of that? Au pair, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like au pair, yeah. So will you receive accommodation in return? Accommodation, yeah. Are you also... And food. And food. Like you. OK, I'm just going to step out and have a chat to my colleagues and I'll be back with you. It is possible that this French nanny has misunderstood the rules regarding work while travelling on a tourist visa. I think Celine may have the wrong interpretation of what woofing is. A lot of people think woofing is just working for free, yeah. but they don't understand that it needs to be on a particular farm that meets the requirements of woofing. It's a serious misinterpretation yeah, and you. could leave Celine taking the next flight home. This French nanny claims she's here to volunteer on an organic farm as a woofer, but Border Force officers believe she's got other plans. Our fear is she is intending to come out to Australia not to be a woofer, learning the operations of an organic farm, but to work, which is in breach of her visa condition. Celine is now given the opportunity to plead her case and convince officers that she should be allowed to enter the country. Is there anything you'd like to say, anything you'd like to provide, any reasons? Yeah? If you still trust in me, I will be uh, ready to forget this plan, to doing au pair, and just staying uh, in a roofing place. Like it's the main thing for me to speak English very well when I leave. That's why uh, I was planning to do that. So, uh, Voilà. Okay. I understood that uh, au pair, it's not, uh, it didn't work with my uh, visa. It's obvious that Celine hasn't done her homework before visiting Australia, and she's not here to wolf. So Officer Phil must now decide if she can cross the border as a genuine tourist. Okay, after weighing up all the information available to me, um, and in consideration with your response, um, I was satisfied that there are grounds for cancelling your visa. That means that your visa um, has been cancelled today. As your visa has been cancelled, okay, um, 
you have been refused immigration clearance into Australia. Okay. Okay. Now, this also means that you may be detained and removed from Australia as an unlawful non-citizen under Section 189 of the Migration Act, 1958. I have to leave. Yeah, okay, which means that we will need to make the arrangements for you to um, travel to a destination where you will be permitted entry. It was quite clear she had an intention to arrive in Australia to conduct au pair, or also known as nanny work and it takes away potential employment opportunities to those who are actually entitled to it. Items found in the possession of this Malaysian traveller have Border Force officers on high alert. During the baggage examination, we've located four chocolate boxes and we found there to be a mix of some chocolates and some pellets which appear to contain a yellowy white um, substance inside them. Two types of presumptive testing are carried out on the pellets to check for illicit substances. The final colour will be pink and blue if it's cocaine. Both of the technologies that we've used so far have come up positive for cocaine. Officers know that this type of pellet is usually carried internally by drug smugglers, which may explain the vile smell coming from the chocolate boxes. He's possibly gotten them out of his body sooner than he was intending to. They've definitely been inside of somebody from the smell. We can tell that. And officers now want to know whether all the pallets are accounted for. We've got some concerns that he still may have some inside his body. So what we're going to do today, we're going to take him for a non-medical internal body scan. He's not in a good place. He knows that he's in a lot of trouble. And now he's just going to have to um, find out exactly how much trouble he is in. The test will not only determine if he is hiding more pallets, but could also save his life. If one of those pellets were to burst, it could possibly kill him from a drug overdose. This couple have failed to accept responsibility for the load of infested fruit found in their bag, but they can only blame themselves for the time it's now costing them. She wants to know what happens to the 12 o'clock line. That's her responsibility. She just wanted to be quickly done. It would have been a lot quicker for her to simply say she had fruit. She'd have been out the door. We wouldn't be having this conversation. It would have been destroyed. I wouldn't have to go and write up a document. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to explain it to you. I know. Explain it to her. The peaches are now confiscated and will be destroyed. The couple receive a $360 fine for failing to declare. Okay, we have to go down to make the payment. And once the fine is paid, they can continue on with their travel. been caught attempting to smuggle a large quantity of drugs into the country. In total we've found 245 pellets with a total weight of just under five kilos of cocaine has been brought into the country by this individual. And officers have strong concerns that there may still be more in his body. If one of those pellets were to burst, it could possibly kill him from a drug overdose. So, as a matter of urgency, officers need to determine if he has anything further hidden inside him. We've sent the gentleman in for a non-medical body scan, which looks for anything that may be inside of his body. It basically takes a photograph of inside um, or an x-ray inside of a person's abdomen. We've received the results back and we had a negative result. While clear of having any more pellets inside of him, the man is now handed over to the Australian Federal Police for further investigation into the large quantity of drugs he has brought into the country. Today was a very successful day for Australian Border Force. 
Uh, we've impeded the importation of approximately 4.8 kilos of cocaine into, uh, into Sydney Airport.